Hello everyone and welcome to the Decim Show episode 14. I'm uh, trying out a new way to record this episode, so uh, you have to bear with me and I'll appreciate some feedback on how you like it. I'll start by talking a bit about what's going on in game lately. Um, as you can see, hopefully see on the screen, um, we're on patch uh, 3.4 now and uh, there's a Christmas garage with the northern lights and uh, mountains and uh, it feels uh, a lot like home to me. Mountains everywhere, snow. A uh, bit confused uh, by there not being any roads or footpaths or anything through the snow. Uh, also confused by the ice on the lake which seems to be breaking up like it does in spring. And I'm from living in terrain almost exactly like this myself with these mountains all around and the water I know that this is a terrain that no no one would send tanks into um, it's the worst possible terrain for tanks uh, any kind of infantry unit can take out the tank with no problem in this terrain it's a horrible waste of resources so, patch 3.4, I said, uh, what's new in patch 3.4? Well, we have a full new line of American tanks. Starting at uh, tier 2 with the M2 light. Coming up through the M3 Stewart, M5 Stewart, M7. That's how far I got, as you can see. Um, it's continuing up and from uh, the higher tiers, uh, I think, you can get autoloaders for most of the tanks, but the higher tiers, higher tiers have uh, autoloaders as their top gun. And uh, well, I haven't tried them myself yet, but uh, from what I hear, they're a bit underwhelming. Underwhelming. Uh, they're not as OP as uh, you may expect from a tank just introduced to the game. And uh, the reason for this is probably that they are autoloaders, and so inherently difficult to balance. So. Pro gaming has erred on the side of safety, and that's something I appreciate. Another thing that came with uh, patch 3.4 was the dynamic display of uh, of uh, stats. Let's see here. If you see on this side here, here you can see. If I choose the vertical stabilizer, you can see that. Uh, the aiming time is given as it is experienced in game and that's a bit uh, different from what we're used to because we're used to seeing a number that said how long before the reticle has shrunken to one third of its original size I think and uh, now we're getting the full aim time and we're getting with the how much it's improved by equipment and consumables so you can see the vertical stabilizer it's reducing my aiming time by half a second uh, traverse speed is also reduced by it strangely enough and tank gets a little bit ta uh, heavier which should explain the traverse speed so got provisions we can see the same story there you can see the extra combat rations they are giving increased traverse speed can see by exactly how much and this is this is a great feature I think it's uh, far better than anything they have on World of Tanks PC far better and uh, made in a di displayed in a way that is easily understandable so that's uh, in my opinion that's the biggest improvement from patch 3.4 well that and uh, the fact that they have re rebalanced the valiant effort uh, medal which uh, no longer is giving masteries left and right to all the campers. That's also great news, in my opinion. Also, in uh, 3.4, we have a new map. We have the canyon map, which I'm going to show you now. Here you can see the, the canyon map. And this is actually a map I like a lot. I'm almost never seeing it, unfortunately. I have, haven't played that much uh, since uh, patch date, but uh, 
But it's uh, definitely a map I like. It has a lot of opportunities. It's very different with this uh, well, donut-shaped uh, water area and the high spot in the center. And there's all kinds of opportunities and possibilities with, on this map. So that's something I really enjoy. Um, there's also another new map. And uh, this map is uh, not really new and it's not really in the game yet. But it's the Dead Rail map that we know. It looks familiar. Um, they have made a test for a new version of it. That you can see here. Old Dead Rail is one of my favorite maps and I'm a bit disappointed by this new version. Because the first thing that strikes me about it is that it's flat. It's, uh, you can still snipe across to the other side, you can do that, but the, the red line positions that allow tanks with good guns and useless camo, it's, uh, they're not there anymore. It's easier to get spotted. You have to go closer to the, to the, the, the center ridge, and you're more at risk of being exposed. Uh, well, haven't gone through this map more than just a few few rounds, and uh, yeah, I'm uh, not very happy. Not very happy with it. I, I like the old one better. W what I will give it is that the texture is looking great. It's uh, nothing to fault about the texture. But it looks a bit flat. Just look at this area here. It's so gently sloped everywhere. It's not as much as a bump. And that's a, a bit disappointing. First of all, it looks boring. Second, these bumps were, were there for a reason. They could be used by a skilled player to, to modify how his tank behaved. If you had poor gun depression, you could put your back up on a on a lump of terrain to to get it uh, get the gun down and you could use some bumps here and there to make use more gun depression to slope your armor better and uh, well it still looks like a good map but uh, not an improvement over what we have I think in addition to these new maps there has also been a lot of activity in uh, the, the bundle store, the premium shop, whatever it's called here. Um, lots of new tanks. Uh, after we got the, the Germans, the Panther 88 and the, the VK 4503, uh, there has been other tanks. Uh, we recently got the, well, maybe before my last episode, but uh, the Hydrostat and the, the M4, A3, A4, they were put in the shop, tanks that uh, haven't been available at all, or for a long time at least. Uh, then they made the bundle with the Berlin Quartet, uh, the IS-2, the ISU-122, the Rudy and the Crumble Berlin. Uh, very expensive bundle. I didn't get it because I'm upset with Wargaming because they have been offering the IS-2, the tank that I really really wanted. They have been offering it to a <laughs> lot of people, but not to me, so now they can just keep it. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit uh, disappointed in them, and uh, so they, they won't get that sale for me. Uh, although I really wanted the ISU-122, it also came in a bundle with the tank I had, so I already have the Crumble and Rudy. Well. I skipped that one. Then the I think the BTS we revisited the store for a short period of time and then we got the big news. The tank you can see me driving now. This is the T54 Model 1, also known as the first prototype. And it's uh, in my opinion it's uh, one of the best premium tanks you can get. I don't think it's Possibly not quite as strong as the IS-3 Defender, but it's damn close. 
gonna say a little bit about this tank. This isn't a tank review, but uh, well, the speed you can see it tra traveling at uh, 50 kilometers per hour downhill. It's uh, good enough, but it struggles a bit uphill. This is a uh, a slope like uh, most slopes we're used to. We're dropping down to 25, 23, yeah. Turning down to 20 and going in a straight line, it can manage 25. And, uh, well, it may not be very impressive for a medium, but it's a lot better than most heavies. A lot better. Uh, so it's, if you think of it like a heavy tank, Try to compare it like to the IS or the Carnarvon or something. It's uh, it's gonna outrun them, no problem. Even the fast heavies. heavies. Uh, and why do we compare it to the heavy tanks? It's because of its armor, which is completely ridiculous. The front plate, uh, 30 millimeters, I think, thicker than on the Type 59, which also already had a good front plate. This one is solid. Angle it, you can front scrape. And uh, let's try to set up the front scrape angle here. Front scrape almost like this, just peek out and shoot and back. It's a very tough front plate to get through. Turret, very strong. Very strong indeed. Uh, stronger than the T44. You have a weak turret roof, true, but uh, very good turret as well. Side armor. Imagine you were to try to side scrape with this medium tank. Let's see, get the angle re right. This is where we want it. See this side of the tank running all the way up to the, the driving light on the side there? That's uh, 90 millimeters of, uh, of side armor. To put that in perspective, uh, no heavy tank in uh, in blitz except the is6 has more side armor oh uh, well sorry is6 and kv4 and kv5 have more side armor than 90 millimeter uh, i think the is3 is uh, the same thickness but all the german heavies the american brit uh, heavies uh, german heavies american heavies uh, the british heavies they all have thinner side armor than this medium tank it's completely ridiculous. This tank is a, a little fortress. It's it's a bunker on tracks, and uh, well, the gun gets the same penetration values as you know from the T44, which are pretty crap. But uh, but you can still uh, make it work if you aim carefully. It's uh, gun handling is uh, it's good enough, and. Uh, with the alpha damage from the 100 millimeter, you can also limit your exposure a lot. So, well, I didn't test it before buying this tank. I the tier eight tanks that are I have used to earn credits so far, they are in comparison relatively slow. Um, you have the Lova, the T34. Uh, I have the IS6, the IS3 Defender. Uh, those are also slower than this tank and uh, and the IS tanks also have uh, less accurate guns than this tank and with the yeah they, they need to use premium ammo just as much as this tank does so for me no doubt in my mind this was uh, this was a tank I wanted and because I'm sure I'm going to drive it a lot I got the, the fancy looking Inferno camouflage as well. Well, in addition to all of this, um, rumor has it that uh, we will see a lot of stuff in the in the shop for the next uh, few weeks. A lot of new stuff. Uh, not quite as good as uh, I think as the the setup they're running for Christmas in New York, in New York. Christmas and New Year on the World of Tanks PC where they have uh, this. Uh, I think advent calendar where they're getting presenting and selling a different uh, limited time tank every day all the way until Christmas so it's a new offer every day uh, could be new tanks could be discounted premiums that have been on sale before or are currently in in sale 
but uh, with a discount, so it's a very exciting place at the moment. But there are rumors about French tanks, uh, yeah, Swedish tank, lots of rumors, and uh, nothing is certain yet. So let's move on to the videos I have this week. Well, uh, I'm going to show you a lot of short clips first, uh, a few full matches in the end. Don't have too much material this week, I'm, f I'm afraid. But here you see me in my Carnarvon, and the reason why I'm showing you this clip is because of all the unlikely shots this tank can hit. I still still don't like the tank. I think it's a big pile of shit. But uh, uh, the gun, when it wants to, it performs incredibly well. And you can see my shots are going in and going through one after the other. And uh, I'm in a position on the flank here. I'm taking shots of opportunity, but yeah, look, even that small piece of turret that's stuck out there, and it's a lot smaller and than you think, because I'm on PC, so I can zoom in a lot more, but that doesn't make the gun any more accurate. It just looks like the targets are closer, so you can't count on hitting shots like that. I'm taking a blind shot. Was there one there? Here is the IS-3, a small piece of grey armor, and we hit it. And now it's starting to really get some really tricky shots here. So here, between all those gaps, yep, we take out the Tiger 2. IS-3 disappeared, where can he be? There, yeah. <laughs> we shoot, and just as we shoot, he reappears, and it goes through. A speculative shot there, and... Uh, we're about to win by capping. There's an American tank down here. He gets destroyed by someone else. And uh, hmm, I wonder. I would like to get one more kill this game. How can we do it? Time is running out. Time is running out. Maybe someone is there. Yeah, <laughs> there goes Tyus. <laughs> so that's what this gun can do. And while we're on the subject of killing overpowered uh, Russian tanks, uh, here I am in one of my tanks that I'm starting to get a bit affectionate about. It's like a stray dog that I've taken home and given food and he's, uh, he's a lot better now. And here I'm facing a full health IS-3. So how will this end? He's, uh, see I'm wiggling my turret here. He can't get his gun down to my hull and he's trying to hit my turret cheeks. I'm trying to hit this as well, and he hit me and I did him. So, well, he has a turret roof that we can go through, and we're getting a bit of help from behind, and he is bouncing off our side, and we ram him to death. So, that's uh, one of my greatest moments last week, ramming an IS-3 to death with a T-28 Proto. And while we're on the subject of completely wrecking uh, overpowered IS tanks, I'll uh, leave you with this little little piece of IS-7. Boom, there he goes. Well, I'm not sure to follow, but it's a moment worth watching. Ammo racks are always good. But... Imagine you're out in your new, brand new, that you bought for free experience in gold, god knows what. American tier 9 autoloader and you're figuring you're gonna rush out and see a thousand damage done in no time. Well, imagine you beat a Borsig on the other team. Enemy is hit. That's quite quite a shot, isn't it? <laughs> 1000 damage delivered by snapshot. Well, we're gonna have to see that again. While you enjoy that slow motion replay, you may also want to have a look at the, the chat where uh, the guy I shot is crossing a few lines, in my opinion. Zooming up that as well for you. So, you can see. I'm not going to say anything more about that. Um, well, I'm going to add a bit more of this, this game so you can watch a few more shots from the Borsig just with some music to and then we'll move on.
fun as ammo racking and IS-7 is, a wise man once told me that there's no such fun as ammo racking someone from your own clan. Well, sorry about that, Frodo. <laughs> It'll give you a chance to wreck me back next clan night. So, let's move on to the full matches. And uh, we're starting out here with a match in my STA-1. A tank which I hate even more than the Conorvan at the moment. Uh, I'm not sure if it's just mine that's cursed or uh, uh, if it's a really bad tank, but I have trouble finding any redeeming features of this tank. It has slightly better camo, I think, than some tanks, but uh, well, it's low, it's sluggish, it's unarmored, everything that hits it pants it. Gun is supposed to be good. I can't find it to be spectacular. Tanks like Panther 2 obviously has better gun. Uh, this feels no better than the gun on the. See, I'm spotted and haven't seen anyone myself yet. So that's how much my camo and view range is worth. I'm alerting my anyway. I'm alerting my team that I've been spotted out here, and I'm proceeding with caution. A very moderate amount of caution. Taking a chance to stick my head over this edge, and uh, yeah, I take out the tracks of the SP before I can reload. He's gone. It seems all the reds are over on that side, so I'm cutting right across the desert. If I'm gonna be able to help my team, I have to get there in before they melt. And that's a bit of a struggle, because, as I said, this tank is not very fast. It's a T-25-2 in the bag that I'm gonna put in the bag. Uh, me and this other... Oh, my two teammate here. Eh, not teammate, sorry, teammate. And he is gone. We're down one tank. Despite this, and we can go. there's a Jack Panther appearing out of thin air right in front of our gun. You see, the Reds have locked themselves in a corner. That's a big mistake. I almost never go to that corner. It's so easy to get, get locked inside the corner, and, uh, and you're running out of options. You can just pen the side of this KV-5, but we are taking return fire from up on the hill. I ignore it for now. And then they set me on fire, and it turns out that's the Jack Pack. Uh, well, not a tank I would advise anyone to turn their back on. Fortunately, the team is on their way to taking him down, and he's so focused on me, he's ignoring them, so I'm just waiting, waiting for him to die, and then going back to work. Like the KV-5 is still back there, aimfully, and we bounce. This is supposed to be a good gun, but I, I just can't see it. Of course, I tend to compare it to real good good guns like on the Carnarvon, then, then this gun is not good at all. But, uh, well, that's unrealistic standards to hold anyone up to. Balance is starting to shift a bit here. We're uh, five, four, but that's about to about to change, I believe. We light the KV five on fire, and uh, oh, there's only one red left, but he's almost full health. And he is a KV-4, which means it's gonna be a real pain to get he gets me. And now I'm a one-shot, or as close to it as makes no difference. Put one into him before running around this rock. Okay, now I don't want to come out. I'm completely dependent on my teammate now, being able to attack the KV from the other side. 
I had one remaining teammate. I noticed the KV4 shot, so I'm trying to push up behind him while he's on the reload. Um, I fumble that a bit, and uh, suddenly I'm behind a different truck instead of the one I was using. Luckily, the KV4 is very slow. I'm, even in my slow medium, I have no real problem keeping him keeping him uh, on the other side of the rock. <laughs> I'm waiting for my teammate to do something. I'm also pointing the nose of my tank into the hill because uh, getting up there fast enough is critical. I don't want to have to reverse up that hill. Here comes my teammate. VK is also very not the best tank to fight a KV4 with, but if we can get him from two sides, at least we can shoot both of us at the same time. And the VK going out in the open here. The, the KV realizes he's not much of a threat. I am forced to reverse up this hill. his attention back to the VK. So, it was a very tight match. And, uh, as we can see on the scorecard here. Well, if it ever shows up. It's second class, 3000 damage. Uh, this is because of the Valiant effort stuff. Well, maybe it wouldn't have been a mastery anyway, but KV4 that I killed there, he got a mastery. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm showing it here, but uh, I know he, he got a mastery on his loss, despite being killed. So, well, those days should be well over with now. For this next battle, we're at the canal map, and I'm in the T28, and... You may have noticed I'm, uh, I do have a thing for underdog tanks, and uh, I've been playing the T28 and the T28 Proto both a lot lately. And uh, it's a bit of a fun, uh, fun battle, because it turns out there are two tank destroyers that are doing the right thing here and end up carrying this whole battle. You see the Borsig there in front of me? He's gonna be very essential for the outcome of this match. Sturer Emil Lesso. Our light tank, he ran the other way to hide behind the team, I guess. Now the T28 is a very slow beast, so got to decide where you want to go and go there as fast as you can. I can see now the, the reds are starting to appear on the north side of the map, so... May as well get up here and see if I can get some shots across. And of course, unnamed shots with the T28 never hit. One of the most horrible, horrible guns I know for shooting uh, is taking snapshots. It, uh, it uh, resembles the SU-152 before the SU-152 was uh, buffed. SU-152 had a, a buff to its uh, a dispersion on traverse after traversing. much happening here. here we go. And we take a snapshot again and we miss again. Great stuff. But you're really impressed so far. <laughs> well finally a fully aimed shot that way hits. The 
because uh, Jack the Panther is in big trouble. I've been spotted, but I'm counting on the reds bouncing me because I have them all pretty much in front of me and as long as they can't hit my sides this tank has very good armor at a distance uh, have to be lucky to hit the weak spots and you see my whole team they're all one shots now <laughs> are cautious to attack. <coughs> Here comes the are you? I'm getting spotted and I'm getting hit from all over so I'm falling back. Try to go around on the left side, so I will only be exposed to one of the reds. This is, uh, by the way, it's basic tank destroyer gameplay. You you make sure you can, you're in a spot where you can see only one red tank. If you can see two, then there's two tanks that can shoot at you. So it it, it guess it's a uh, a rule that applies to all tank classes, but uh, especially uh, tanks that rely on positional gameplay with you, where you find a position and, and sit there for a while, sniping or camping or whatever you would call it. Uh, if the spot is good, then you, you can see one red tank, you can pull back into cover from him, and when he's dead you can move just a little and you will see another red tank and yeah. it's the, the ideal position and no only only two of us left the two tank destroyers and the three reds uh, this can, I'm, I'm on low hit point I'm I guess I'm almost a one-shot to some of the reds. Uh, well, I'm finding it a bit difficult to add commentary to this <laughs> battle because everything is going so slowly. I'm running out of things to say. Well, over here is my last teammate, so I'm heading over that way and just in time to take out the IS-6 coming for him. Oh, there's the SU-101, or 100M1, I guess. He cups one in the side and r runs away. And this is when we do the bullet thing. We, we push. We have the, the big armor advantage and we push. Of course, if he's, if he's loading premium ammo, he has 330 millimeters of heat pen, so he could go through me anywhere. So, but let's hope he doesn't know that. Oh, there he is. Oh, and I dunk that shot completely, but with a little fine adjustment, we can just manage to land one on his roof and. Our teammate takes care of the last remaining red. So that's a victory. Very close one. Uh, 3000 damage. And uh, I think uh, about the same for my teammate. Yep, a bit more. And you see the damage done by the teams. It's close. It's a really close battle. And, uh, and the tank destroyers took this one. For sure. For my last video this time, uh, this episode, I'm, I'm packing the T28 and it's a supremacy battle. And uh, the reason I included this is because uh, 
well, I hate the supremacy mode, but I have reactivated it uh, because if I run with it deactivated, it hurts my stats too bad. Uh, I don't know why, if I'm getting two good opponents uh, when I have it turned off or if I'm being punched by the game, I don't know. But uh, running with supremacy on sure helps my, my stats. And uh, I keep seeing people saying you shouldn't bring slow tanks into supremacy battles. And uh, well, this is the slowest one. And uh, I'm in a supremacy battle. And uh, well, it can work. It may lose the occasional battle, but uh, I think I'm still winning as much as I do in encounter mode with the slow tank in supremacy mode. Got very uniform to one side, reds have spread out a bit more. Very uncomfortable in this position now. I know that the reds maybe they have finished capping on the other side and could uh, be coming up from behind, so they try to push up and uh, it's slower. Realizing I'm not gonna make it to the corner, I may as well turn around. Uh, yes, yeah. legendary aim of the team again. And we are losing tanks at an alarming rate. Managed to get one back, but we're still one down. There's fighting going on all over. Still one down. Here, finally we make contact and we take his tracks. We don't even take them, we just damage them. Shot straight into his side with a 120mm gun. Oh! We're gonna just bully here. We're in town and there's someone behind me shooting. Ah, we'll ignore him. We'll ignore everyone behind us. No! Or we can turn around. Well, he was behind us, so we have gone away. Two tanks against four now. Eighty three. Famous for its poor aim, poor penetration, and uh, long reload. This IS-3 first is a big regret, this is the gun, looks like you might have it, uh, not anymore. So, KV-3, where are you going? Oh, yes, I can go this T-43 instead. See, this is, uh, this is what the T-28 likes. It likes to bully people. Trying to run away? I don't think so. AV-3 takes my tracks again. I think he's firing high explosives at me. He's not running the 22mm gun. Don't go through me if you ammo. Oh, not anymore. One red tank left, and we're about to win by capping. Morsing uh, somewhere. And it's just where we want it. Don't do too much damage on the first hit, unfortunately. Come back, Morsing. I need to shoot him more. And yeah, that takes the wall and nothing else. So. Big victory, 3674 damage, and high, cal high caliber metal, 4 kills. No. Sometimes the T28 can really work. Scorecard certainly shows it. So, that's all I had for the Destiny Show episode 14. Looking forward to see you all in the next episode or another video. Bye!